Lee. Welcome back to the channel, mate. Afternoon, bro. Talk me through some of these bits, Lee. Mazda MX-5. Yeah, it's just a case of filling the metal back. I'm all right with that. What's linkage? It's hubbing the rear. A lot of thought going into this build, mate. No, oh, just <laughs> playing it by ear, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sizable turbo. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today you join me and my beautiful girlfriend Kat who is behind the camera on a trip up to see my good friend Lee Booth. Now if you've been watching my videos you'll know that Lee Booth has helped me out so much in the past with my cars and in fact he's offered to help me with my current project Heidi, my Mordor Mark II Escort in future but today is not about my cars, because today we're going to get another update on Lee's latest project, which is a super cool 100E. Now, he's changed his mind on a couple of things in terms of the spec. You know, the build is um, snowballing, <laughs> as they often do. So yeah, really looking forward to getting up to see Lee and check out what he's been up to, and of course, show you guys what he's been up to. All right, Lee, welcome back to the channel, mate. Afternoon, pal. It's fair to say that you've been pretty busy with this thing since we last had an update. Just to recap, last time that I came down here to check this thing out, you'd already stripped it because it was a complete car when you bought it. You'd already started you know, stripping and red oxiding the underside with your yep. son. You'd already cut out this big hole here to uh, give you room to mock up the engine and stuff. But um, yeah loads more has happened since yeah i've been uh, cracking on yeah good man i've been enjoying following the uh, updates on instagram as well yeah i'll leave a link to lee's instagram in the description of this video definitely give him a follow to uh yeah keep up to date with the rest of this build when i came down here before you was quite excited about your front suspension setup for this thing that hadn't arrived yet but obviously has now yep you can see it's now got coilovers fitted it's got the uh, alloy front hubs and stuff it'll be running m16 calipers and you'll have to talk me through some of these bits lee it's got an escort rack it's got the cross member that is i think is derived from an escort and then uh mike at old ford autos converts them for you i believe this is the original anti-roll bar but then they do something with the brackets right it's it's not the same as it is standard because obviously it goes through this adjustable arm here which you wouldn't get on the 100e so would this run like an escort um steering column as well then or oh. i've got it in the boot all oh, right but i think it's all adapted all oh, right so it came with a steering column as well yeah, as yeah. so you get the uj's and a knuckle joint and then you have to send your steering column to them they modify it and send it back cool because obviously these would have had a steering box fitted originally yeah. wouldn't they so you kind of have to do yeah the, this the, kind of yeah, thing really you have to yeah. right yeah but yeah it's i can't can't fault the quality it's yeah. bang on Bank else in the front end is this lump originally you was going to fit the z-tech turbo engine that was in your dad's kit car right yep and you've sold the kit car now with yep. that engine fitted what we've got sitting there at the moment is just a mock-up engine obviously from uh, mazda mx5 this would be a 18 engine right 18 yeah. yeah but there will be something really cool hanging off the side of the mazda lump when this is actually up and running we'll, we'll get to that a bit later one thing that's really interesting about this lump is the fact that the sump clears the escort cross member so some of the things that you have to mess about with with a ztec turbo you don't necessarily have to with a mazda lump which is really interesting the mounts lee has actually knocked up himself and he tells me he's knocked up a spare set already because he's trying to persuade me to go <laughs> <laughs> mazda mx5 <laughs> in one of my cars and yeah you're saying that you've used the mazda mx5 rubbers on this as well right yeah they're they're the original rubbers i think usually they sit a bit more flat yeah they're a bit steeper angle so yeah. i mean if they're a bit squidgy or soft and I, I don't know how it's going to work because i've not ran the engine yet yeah but you can buy stiffer uh mounts yeah so i'll either get stiffer mounts or make some like stainless steel cups to go around here but i mean if you grab the engine and wiggle it around it's solid it's yeah. not moving anywhere i think it'll be all right to be honest like these engines don't weigh that much do they like no no i don't really. think it's going to matter but um, yeah, it's, it's well in there, obviously tucked underneath this sort of shelf, which you said you want to keep. A lot yeah, of people cut that. these out, don't they? Yeah, um, I don't like it like that. Yeah, no, I think it looks better like that. 
but yeah, plenty of room in front for a radiator or something else you may need to, to mount there as well. But um, yeah, we'll have a look through here because it is still all cut out. You can see sort of how deep the engine is sitting in. And that is one thing with 100 E's, you do have to do like bulkhead yeah, it's a, to fit anything really, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's a bit of a job, but yeah, I think we're gonna have to do a pedal box mount and run a escort bias pedal box or a floor mounted bit. Yeah. All the original where the master cylinders go. Yeah. It's all ripped out. So yeah. we've got to get a bit funky with that. I think a lot of people do go floor mounted with these, yeah. like just because just it's out of the way, then not it? Yeah, I just gotta decide what floor mount I'd want to go with because I know there's some that are not very good quality. <laughs> so <laughs> like everything. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously you need to stop. Yeah, <laughs> because you sort of cut this out before, you know, you put the engine in and stuff. The engine and box is now in there. And um, yeah, it's just a case of filling the metal back in, right? Yeah. Um, which is no problem for you. You're no, that's pretty handy with metal. I'm, I'm all right at that. <laughs> <laughs> now this um, tunnel sitting here, uh, I wrongly assumed was your gearbox tunnel, but this is actually a diff tunnel, right? Yeah. Um, that's put... just there out of the way. You were saying you basically plan to cut all of this out. Yeah, right? I'm going to cut all that out all the way up to the back and yeah. then I might have to trim this back here a little bit yeah. to get in there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that brings us nicely on to the rear end, actually, because uh, plenty of changes have happened here since the last video as well. So before we actually look at the rear end, I've got to say, I love your gearbox mount. That's really, really cool. Oh, cheers, mate. Um, yeah, sort of mounted through this box section. Really handy that these have these bits of box section that go this way on yeah. the car, like for for gearbox mounts. This has been sleeved inside and there's like a reinforcement plate on the inside. I'm gonna put the same detail as this yeah. in here. Right. Uh, and obviously this is adjustable left and right and up and down. All oh, right. So so that's not the finished article? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's nearly there. Yeah. But I'd, until the uh, prop's in and it's all sat on its wheels, I don't know what clearance issues I'm gonna have. Look comfortable down here, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and no, that's really cool. So these, what, you just bought these rubber? Yeah, things, I, th I think, yeah, they're just there, yeah. generic engine mount bobbins off eBay. Yeah, no, that's really cool. But yeah, around the back, uh, plenty of work's been happening. So you've decided to go English axle with this. Yep. It didn't have an axle fitted when we come last time. And um, yeah, you've already been cracking right on with uh, six link in it. So we've got the two links either side going forward. And then on the back, there's a Watts linkage. Yeah, none of this is finished, but You've got the boxes in, uh, the bars are sort of on that side. This side you can see here, the bars aren't quite on. Um, yeah, these are just in, because I've got a, I think I've measured it's about 80 mil I have to cut out the bar uh, and then re-weld another boss in. Yeah, because as clever as doing all this six link is, <laughs> especially to like an amateur like me, this was actually an escort kit you bought. Yep. So um, you've had to basically make it all to fit. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, yeah, modify it to fit. What I don't like about any six link kit you can buy, the brackets, they come as one piece. Yeah. So you have to chop them in half and weld them back together on your axle because I think they come for people that are building fresh axles that, that you slide them on then. Yeah, and then attach the end afterwards. Attach the axle end on afterwards. But yeah. nine times out of 10, people are gonna be putting them on an axle that's already built. Yeah. So I, I just find it a bit odd you can't buy one that's split ready. Already split in two. I'll tell you one thing that is really funny, how um, narrow these original leaf springs are, like 100D leaf springs. Quite is. robust for 29 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'd be having a fair bit more than 29 <laughs> put through this English axle setup. But yeah, so these will be removed, obviously, once you finish. Um, yeah, the they're, axle, they're just there to keep the axle in place while I build the six link. Yeah. So as soon as... I've got the suspension mounted off the top of it, then yeah. I can remove these and they'll be gone forever. Yeah, cool. But yeah, I mean, loads of progress. Um, it's really cool seeing all this like fabrication for the rear axle, but <laughs> still a long way to go. Oh, yeah. But yeah. And just keep plugging away, doing a bit at a time. Yeah. So yeah, there it is. Watts linkage. I've said before, I think it's really cool that you can get these Watts linkage kits now that sort of weld onto the back of an English axle. And as the suspension compresses, this thing's able to rotate, which means the axle still stays central, basically, isn't it, through, yeah. through its travel. That's the one. Which is where this is better than a panard rod, like, which is... Yeah, because I think panard rod, it goes up and to the side or something, doesn't it? Yeah. No, I think, I think all this stuff is really clever, especially when you're an ad adapting an English axle um, to suit it. You know, most people will go down an Atlas route, wouldn't they, and 
Yeah, this axle's off a 105e Anglia. All oh, right, so slightly narrower than like an Escort yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're like 46 inches. Cool. I think an Escort's 50. Yeah. Might be wrong. Yeah, back inside the rear of the cockpit, you can see uh, that these boxes are now sort of fully seam welded um, along there. And again, these were Escort parts, yeah. right? So they were, you know, needed to be adapted to fit. And you can see there that Lee's had to put like an extra bit in just where they weren't quite it's, long Yeah, enough. it's not much, it's about an inch. For the most part, they fit all right. Yeah, no, no, it's, no. At the end of the day, they're just there so that you've got room for the, the bars to move yeah. in it, like for the suspension, so. I noticed Frank Kelly, actually, like he didn't bother putting boxes in his rally car, like. Oh, did not? Yeah, he just had it, he had the floor raised and just had it flat. Oh, really? So that everything had enough room. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right, so something that Lee's been messing around with literally in the last week and something that you would have seen from the clips already is quite a severe exterior aesthetic change <laughs> with the Escort bubble arches. This one is just clamped on at the moment, but this front passenger side one is now fully welded on. And this was a, a little bit of Agno. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. it follows the 100 e wing nicely. Obviously, you would have had to put a little dink in there for the, for the swage line. I was panicking a little bit because I sort of chased it round here and then because I had a clamp down here, yeah. there was nowhere for it to stretch. But once I removed the clamp, it just sort of fell into place nicely. Yeah. But it was one of them jobs where I just committed and went for it, no matter how it was going to turn out. But luckily I got to like down here and I thought, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. It, look, it looks, looks fine, man. It's like, it's all nice and close. Now, obviously this has all been plug welded. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think that's plug good. welded like every inch or so. All right. All right, cool. Can we, um, can we talk about how mint these wings were before you started cutting them about? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely mint, rust free. Yeah. Hundred E wings. Yeah. And you butcher them. Yep. Fair play. I think I think the on that side of the wing there's a there's a tiny little bit of crust going on down here. Yeah. Which obviously I'll cut out anyway. Yeah. But the yeah, the the wings was perfect. <laughs> and I ground a big hole out of them. <laughs> nah, cool, but hundred E's with bubble arches on. Look awesome, man. <laughs> Uh, really cool and obviously you started working on the rear one yep um it's just clamped in position at the moment but uh Should yeah take that off? yeah if it's all right all right so with this having bubble arches obviously means lee's going to be tubbing the rear uh so this bit will be staying right the bit that you've left yeah that's yeah. staying yeah and they're quite big aren't they considering how skinny the wheels would have been on a 100e like they, yeah. they sort well, of i think they're actually trailer wheels what what they use yeah so i think they're like only like four or five inch wide. Yeah. They've got unusually big tubs for which, which the size is, of the which wheel. Which is handy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, we can see that you've cut this bit out and you're telling me about a really cool tool you've got. An air tool that punches the holes. Is that yeah, right? I think it's like a punch or an edge setter. Yeah. And then another tool that makes this sort of distortion in, in the panel here. Yeah, um, so you can overlay panels so they sit flush with each other. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously this, you've had to fold out as well, right? Yeah, so... I've, I went round that with like an adjustable spanner to get it to like 45 degrees. Yeah. And then just gently went round with a hammer and dolly. Yeah. Yeah, and that come out. Yeah, so this looks like strength back in the panel, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Before I did that, yeah, it's a real good amount of strength it puts back in. Yeah. Some people don't do it, but. Yeah, then, no, then the, the. Yeah, it just gives you. Because I can, it? when I tub, I can spot weld the tub in and seam seal it, and then I can spot weld it round here. Yeah. It just gives you something to. Yeah, weld the metal onto really, because yeah. if if that was flush and then you seam welded your you like fillet welded your uh, tub into it, it would create a shed load of distortion. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A huge, From a the huge welding. amount. Yeah, yeah. that would be ripply as anything. Yeah, and then once that's all filled in, obviously you'll weld the arch on. Yep. And then um, yeah, this the bit of metal you're going to put in here, you were saying it will like stick out. Yeah, it will stick out where the arch is. I'm going to have to make a cardboard template because yeah. it comes out into the bubble arch. And then once you've spot welded it in position, then I think you like bond the arch to the return lip yeah. into the bubble arch. Well, I think I think that's how everyone does it. I'm just winging it at the minute. Nah, make it up <laughs> straight on, man. Yeah. Always works for me. <laughs> but yeah, no, it is really cool to come down here and see this thing. I absolutely love a 100E with bubble arches fitted. One thing that you are kind of torn on is the wing mirrors. Yep. Because you've got the hole in the front wing here, 
where they would have been mounted originally, yep. but they also look pretty cool when people mount them up here uh, on the door, I think, rather than the actual yeah. A pillar. So a uh, bit I, of a dilemma. I like them here, but obviously I can't see very well. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I'll be able to see anything out of them anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then some people, I believe they go on the door here, but I'm putting fiberglass doors on, so I'm not sure that's the best bet to bolt a big heavy wing mirror to a fiberglass panel, not yeah. sure. Do let us know what you think in the comments. Where would you mount the wing mirrors to this thing? Up here <laughs> or on the front wings? Now you just mentioned that uh, you've got fiberglass doors coming for this thing. Yep. And it's gonna have quite a few fiberglass panels. <laughs> yep, so I've got, uh, I've already got a fiberglass bonnet uh, that come from old Ford autos. Oh bloody hell. Ooh. Ooh, my tape's going. Yeah, so I've already got the bonnet. Uh, that come from old Ford Autos. Uh, I've got a boot lid on its way uh, and a set of doors. Yeah. So and it's... you showed me earlier actually you've got a fiberglass front panel. Yeah, oh, sorry, front panel. Yeah. But while we're talking about the front panel actually, you, there's some changes been made over here. Everywhere I look, there's like other changes that, are, <laughs> that I'm forgetting to mention. But down there, that sort of, what would you call that? Just like a strengthening bar or something? Yeah, it just braces the chassis rails. Yeah, um, and you said a lot of people cut this out, which I don't think most is a good idea. Everyone I've seen, they cut it out. So they just literally hack it off here and grind it back flush. Yeah. And then this panel here, behind the front panel, they just hack that and cap that as well. And obviously that's really flimsy. There's no strength in it whatsoever. So mm. I made some laser cut flanges and welded them on so this could be removable. Yeah, and just made some plates in here just so I can bolt the bits that I've cut out back in. Yeah. And it's put a lot of strength back in there. Yeah, because you want all this removable just to make engine like removal oh, and refit compared, easier. Compared right? to the Escorts, once when I put this in place, you literally lift it two foot off the ground, nice and level, yeah. boom, straight just in. Slide it in. Yeah. So yeah, you're sort of having, having your cake and eating it yeah. by keeping all these bits, you know, for the strength, but you've made them removable, which, um, yeah, I think is really cool. A lot of thought going into this build, man. No, oh, just <laughs> playing it by ear, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this um, sort of outer panel, obviously that'll be replaced with the fiberglass bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're, you've sort of kept all this. Yeah, I'm just keeping it for mocking up purposes. Yeah. But yeah, another thing that you've been sort of pondering is where to put the rear turrets for the rear coilovers, yeah? So, you know, because you've got a six link set up, it's gonna have a rear coilover set up and yeah, you need to basically fit some turrets here for the rear coilovers, yeah? Yeah, so I can either do it the escort way, which is on top of the tub here, or I can come out here uh, and go through the floor pan there. The dilemma will make more sense if we sort of explain it from underneath. Obviously, if you look under here, I've got a massive gap for a wheel. Yeah. So I've measured, I'm gonna go 9J wheels with a minus 12 offset. Yeah. Uh, but the, the wheel is going to sit a good 10, 15 mil back here. Yeah. So there's not a lot of room because the chassis leg here, there's no room to get the coil over down. So the turret's going to have to sit inboard here. And I think I'm going to mount it to the back of the, the four link brackets. Just got to commit with the grinder again and start cutting more holes up. No, that's it. If you're, if you're doing a proper rear axle setup like this, then you know, you've got to have it right. And, and if you have it, inboard like the the shock uh will be nice and vertical yeah it? Like, yeah i've got a bit of work to do on the four link boxes to finish them mm. and the next port of call for me is the turrets because i can't finish the watts linkage until i've got it on its wheels so you're finding now like you're getting to a stage where everything's got to be done in the right order like sort yeah, of thing. yeah yeah like I, I could what you what you do is you, you see people that make the brackets for the watts linkage and they make them really long and you have loads of holes in. Yeah. And that sort of gives you an option to put it yeah. where you want, but I'd rather just make them where they need to go and have short boxes if I can. Right. Okay. You always have one shorter than the other. You have one long one and one short one. Yeah, yeah. But I'm getting there. Yeah, nice, awesome, man. All right, so back under the passenger side front arch, and you can see things like the chassis and uh, around here have been hit with the Raptor bed liner, but it's gray. Yeah, that's because I've changed my mind on the color. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like a gunmetal grey that I'm going to be painting it now. Yeah. Only because I wanted to get on with doing the Raptor and wherever I phone paint suppliers, they couldn't match the colour. Oh, right. I had really trouble, so I just give up in the end and thought, mm. a lot, I've seen a few that are gunmetal. Uh, yeah, just went with that. I think it'll work. It's more of a rude colour, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. rather than like the classic I do. I do blue. really like the, the Ambassador Blue, though. Well, it's still time to change your mind. It's only the no. underside you've um, no. been attacking. And... Some of it you've had to redo. Do you want to talk us through that? No. 
<laughs> so this area here, you can see here actually, like where it was hit with yeah. the raptor and I'll give it's you, peeled off. I'll send you some pictures, but this was absolutely beautiful when I done it. So if you see this red oxide, that was original. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it looked all right on the face of it. Uh, and I just like scotch brighted it down a little bit. But underneath, it had some sort of underseal. And I came out three weeks later, uh, and I was just working like I usually do. And I went under here, and this had all blew out like a big bubble. <laughs> uh, and I was, yeah, I looked at it, I was like, what's going on here? And I have touched it, and it popped, and it all just peeled off like wallpaper, so it obviously reacted. And I just sat here for about an hour looking at it, wondering whether I should end myself or not. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, luckily, most of the underneath of this thing, you bare metaled anyway. Yeah, it's just like a couple of areas like this, you sort of trusted. Yeah, the, yeah, just, the, yeah, just highlights the importance of never trusting anything. Yeah. Like when it was done, I thought I was dead proud of myself. I thought, yeah, I've finally done something really, really nice. And then three weeks later, it fell off. <laughs> yeah, that kind of stuff's disheartening, man. Yeah. But at least you know that the majority of it, you did bare metal. Like, I remember you yeah. telling us before that you was under here with your son. Yeah, it was. So, so, you know, luckily, because imagine how you'd be feeling now if you'd wrapped the whole thing yeah. without, you know, you, yeah, well, you'd have to strip it all I off. I think you get, uh, I'll obviously bare metal this. Luckily, where it's really difficult to get to, I bare metal and it's, it's, yeah. it's took well. Yeah. But you get, I think it's called a bar coat. So, yeah, my so, mate Rob's told me about yeah, that. Yeah, so when yeah. you put your bar coat on, it literally just, it stops uh, paint reacting. Yeah, yeah. So everything I'm going to do now, like underneath wise, I'm going to bar coat it and then paint it on top of that. Yeah, no, that's cool. But yeah, this looks really nice though, man. Nice, durable. Um, it's really hard wear as well. And yeah, I think I think the car's going to look all right in grey, man. Yeah, it's, it's like a, it it's not metallic. It's just like a base gunmetal yeah, I've yeah, gone for. Yeah. I'm not putting chrome bumpers or anything. I'm having going down your way and having no chrome. So I'm just going to paint everything like satin black. Well, but satin black against the grey is going to yeah. look awesome. Definitely. How much have you done in terms of the Raptor? Is it just this one uh, front wheel arch? Or? No, I've done, I did this one, and I did the other front wheel arch, and then I did that to, so I could get all this assembled. Yeah, of course. Uh, and thought, oh, once yeah, it would be one and done, but now I've got to take it all back off again to do this. Yeah. One little glitch in the big progress you've been making on this. Uh, that's all right. You've been cruising for it. Well, it seems like you've been cruising for it when you're watching it from the other side of Instagram. It doesn't, it, <laughs> it doesn't feel like it to me. <laughs> What I do find though is I have to sort of like set myself a challenge because if I try and do too much and you start making silly mistakes or or doing something not as good as what you other, otherwise usually would. So I sort of set myself one job, do it, then go home yeah. and then come back the next day. Even if it's just a simple little job like bolting something on, I'll set myself a task for that, that day, bolt it on and then go and do whatever I'm doing. Yeah. That kind of brings us on to um, <laughs> the next part to show you, which is what we were on about earlier, that's going to be hanging off the side of this MX-5 lump. So I've got to clock the turbo, because obviously it's the wrong orientation, but he is going to sit in there like that. Pretty sizable turbo, but plenty of room in there, in a 100E anyway. Yeah. And the, the downpipe can go straight down that gap there, look. Yeah. Loads of room. Quality. Yeah, because like, I've always thought of these 100E uh, engine bays being small, but they are sort of that way. They're short in but depth. But they are really wide, aren't they? Yeah. But then even saying that they're sort of small that way, you have got plenty of room here for the radiator and intercooler yeah. because obviously you've had to set the engine back. So once yeah. you do the inevitable uh, bulkhead mods, yep. it's not a small engine bay, is it? Like, it's absolutely no. fine. No, no. There's a panel which I made to close the bulkhead off. That fits in here nicely. Oh, you showed us that last yeah, time. Yeah, I showed you yeah. that. But because I've had to set the engine further back than you ordinarily would a ZTEC, yeah. then that's going in the bin because it's not deep enough. Right. So I think I made that about 100 mil in depth, and yeah. I think it's going to be about like 150 mil in depth now. Right. Good job you didn't weld that in then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's awesome, mate. Look at the size of this thing. Wuhan whirler. Yeah. But um, yeah, the price of these, even if you, you have can't. to buy one every year. Do you know what? Like... And my dad runs one on his TVR. That's yeah. like 600 horsepower. They're smooth. The turbine don't wobble. The, yeah. You can't. You can't beat them. Yeah. I don't know how they make a turbo for 200 notes, but yeah, they yeah. do. A turbo this spec in one of the other brands, should we say, you could buy six of these, no? Yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm pretty sure, you know, it's not going to last six times, you know, no, less no, no. than, no. you know? And yeah, this is a like roller bearing turbo as well, you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. Proper smooth. Yeah. 
Wuhan Whirler. I think that's good for like 450 horsepower, that yeah. turbo. And um, you've already got another engine getting built for this as well, you yep. were telling me. Yeah, we'll talk about that when it comes. This engine is stock, but it is just for mock-up purposes. I don't think it'd be much use now, it's full of grinding dust. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lee, as usual, really cool to uh, check this thing out and, and see what you've been up to. I will, of course, keep following on your Instagram. Yeah, likewise. Um, but yeah, you reckon next time we come and see this for an update, it might be on all four wheels. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to pull it out in the sunshine and get a better look at it. Until then, massive thanks for inviting us around. Anytime, mate, and, as uh, always. I'll, I'll chat to you soon. Yeah, take care, brother. All right, so as you can see, Lee really is chipping away at the 100E build at a very speedy rate, and it's set to be an absolute beast. Now, if you want to see more regular updates of the build, definitely follow Lee on Instagram. I will, of course, leave a link to his Instagram in the description of this video. But yeah, other than that, do let us know in the comments what you think of the build so far, and also, let us know where you think he should put his wing mirrors, as we mentioned earlier on in the video. But yeah, for now, we're actually going to go and visit my parents because we're in the rough area of where my parents live. So I'm going to end this video here. If you did think it was any good, as usual, please do give it a thumbs up and share it on your social media to help spread the word of my channel. Check the links in the description to my website, my social media. I'll leave my email address down there as well for anyone who wants to contact me. Don't forget to check out the Petrolhead Style website for really cool car-themed products. And got to send a massive thanks, as always, to my patrons for your ongoing support. But other than that, until next time, from me and my beautiful girlfriend, Kat, thanks for watching.